Hi everybody and welcome to the show. We're going to do something a little bit different this week because there was some news that came out recently that has caused a little bit of debate in aviation geek circles and I wanted to talk about it and just the way that we discuss aviation and aviation history generally online because the internet is not a great place most of the time. And, well, it's left me rather conflicted this week. And this is not our usual sort of pod. We've not even given a full number on the podcast feed. It's just in as a bonus. Because I've been left with a conundrum on this. Because the news that came out in the latest issue of Aeroplane magazine related to the transformations that are going on at the Imperial War Museum at Duxford. Now, Duxford is warbird mecca for just about everybody who's into that sort of thing. And it's a place that's in one way is stuck in time, which is good, and in another way is, does need to move forward. It's a wonderful place to visit, and it is great to just see the Remarkable collection there, the the operators that are there as well. And it's got a special place in my heart. First time I went was 1988, and I just adore the place. Now, the news was around the transformation of airspace, which is the big hangar that is basically the first thing you see when you walk in or you're driving past on the motorway. And the story that was put out in Aeroplane magazine was that it was going to be transformed into a Cold War exhibition and that a number of classic aircraft were going to be moving out, including the short Sunderland, along with the other York and a few others as well. Now, I did what most people do when they hear news of the like of that and took to the Twitters and immediately said, this is a terrible thing. And shouldn't we all be shocked that Duxford would be doing such a thing? Now, on this podcast, I've interviewed a number of prominent aviation museum people. We're sponsored by the fantastic Pima Air and Space Museum out in Tucson, Arizona. And in chatting with Scott and Andy and the team out there, there are many things that they would like to do, but can't. And they have far more space out there than, say, Duxford does. Now, when it comes to checking on these things, my mistake was not to put a call in and say, is this right? And I did eventually and spoke to someone at the Imperial War Museum who told me that the story is not accurate as far as their understanding went. The next day, there was a change.org petition started, and I responded to the message that was shared on Facebook saying that I understand the airplane article was incorrect. Now, my use of language there was less than ideal, really, um, because I was saying that a journalist had gotten their story wrong. Now, I think there's things in that story that are accurate. And I think the questions around the Sunderland itself is probably where I stated my inaccuracies for. But what happened and what came out of one of my aviation pod colleagues, Dave, who runs the fantastic Wings Over New Zealand show and is busy doing his Wings Over Britain part two series of podcasts, he just shared a change org and it all sort of kicked off underneath then. And last night, so I'm recording this on Tuesday. And as I was getting ready to head out for football, I was contacted publicly on that thread and was stated that I was impinging journalistic virtues and other things that weren't particularly nice. And luckily I was able to go have a run around and, blow off a bit of steam and sleep on it. But my initial reaction to that was, why do I subscribe to Airplane Magazine anymore? And Flypass for that matter. We're going to get onto those in a second. 
why am I supporting this if this is the response that will come through on Facebook when I've shared my information, he shared his, and I would never question a journalist's integrity at all. We need more of them and they do a great job. So I haven't cancelled my airplane subscription for a number, number of reasons. One, they've been silly enough to have me write for them twice. So there is that. My first ever paid writing gig was in airplane and Ben Dunnell, the editor very kindly put it on the cover. It was a typhoon article and I gave all my copies away. I bought a few. And of course now I can't get any more for that. So my digital subscriptions, just about all there is for that one. I then interviewed the fantastic team at Typhoon Legacy who are restoring JP843 out in BC. Spoke to Ian for a workshop article they did there. Definitely go check out what Typhoon Legacy is doing. And Again, I was wondering, I've been annoyed by somebody at Aeroplane. Maybe I should just up sticks this, because why, why do I still read these magazines? Well, in the case of Flypast and Aeroplane, I've been reading these magazines since I was six, seven, eight. We used to get them in Canada like three months late, like crazy times. So... I had shelves of them. I used to keep them all. If for some reason my dad had bought me a duplicate, it was great because I could cut the pictures out and make collages and things. And nostalgia plays a part. The fact that they've been giving me money for articles I've written is also nice. Well, Airplane has, Flypass hasn't yet. But they get a lot of stick and it's uncalled for. There's silly people out there saying that they recycle uh, stories and things like that. It's not true. Um, personally, I, I think it's interesting that Ben seems to be writing a lot of the articles in Airplane. He's he's flexing his muscles on there, which is which is great. But you know, guests I've had on the show, Matt Willis, regular writer for them. You know, James Kitely, who hasn't been on yet, but we will do. We're going to talk about flying boats and walruses and things like that eventually, um, once we can get all our ducks in a row. It's just written a fantastic database in, in the latest issue about the caribou. So should I fall out with someone online? How should that affect me? Now, the falling out bit is mainly where this rambling conversation comes to, because debate is pretty toxic everywhere at the moment. We're in an election year in, in two countries. People have a lot of going on. But when it comes to people's passions and hobbies, the AV geek community is one that turns nasty pretty quickly when we're all kind of in it for the same thing. To be fair, look at some of the comments on the videos I've done. The B58 one has hundreds of comments. And to be fair, I have to own up and I apologize for this. I can bite myself. We, we all do it. I'm trying not to. But this incident that happened over the last day has made me really think about you know, my actions, how I share history, because Aeroplane has been telling Aeroplane stories for over 100 years now. It is a fantastic magazine, and there are fantastic people who work there. They do superb work, have incredible networks for it. They are not as, say, specialist aviation history as, say, the aviation historian is, another magazine that I subscribe to, who are going through big changes at the end of the year, going to an annual as opposed to a quarterly magazine. They're great. Mick and Nick over there also have been stupid enough to let me write for them, working with the fantastic Ian Bott on an RP3 rocket um, article. So I subscribed before they offered me that. That's just for, for the record. But I want to support things that are doing right. And to be fair, the same thing goes for this podcast. We have some fantastic people on Patreon who regularly get these episodes early. It'll be interesting to see what, what they think of this as they'll be guessing it before this goes out into the world. And I just think I need to be more measured in the way I communicate with 
my fellow aviation fans. This is basically a startup video and pod version of what Airplane do far better than I've been able to produce. My guests have been fantastic. number of them have, have written for many, many magazines and publications and are great. That's why we love to have them on and have the discussions that we do, because the history of flight is fascinating. It is constantly interesting. It's constantly being reassessed. And because of it, it just makes life a bit easier. You know, I've got a stack of books here that hopefully we're going to, we're going to get to more over here as well. Other things in the pipeline, there's an endless supply of great stories that we can tell. And we need to remember that Airplane has been doing the good work of sharing information about aviation since, you know, the year dot. And, you know, they've had crazy editors along the time. <laughs> Charles Gray, Notorious is probably the best thing to do. And, you know, that was back in the Airplane days when it was relaunched in the 70s as, as Airplane. And... I have the utmost respect for them putting out the magazine they do. I have more worries about Flypass that seems to be a little bit more photographic these days um, than it is. It still surprises me from time to time. There's interesting articles popping up, but I, I, I read these things for the stories as much as for the pictures. So, yeah, there's that. But that's just you know, my opinion. Still subscribe to it and they happily take my money every year. Now, I struggle with day jobs and normal life to get this show out at least once a week. I don't always manage it, um, especially now focusing on the YouTube videos. They take a lot of time to get going. But there seems to be people out there that want to talk about things and they want to continue to share the love about aviation. So we finally get to the point of this conversation, I hope we can have, which is how we debate things online when it comes to points of fact, points of conjecture. The default tends to be, oh, no, no, you're wrong. And that never is a great way to start a conversation. Think about the effort that has gone into a piece of work. And, you know, there is a lot of bad history out there. And there's a lot of bad history that gets incredible traction on the internet because people have found out how to make it bite size and condense it to a way that is snappy. And the tropes continue to go out. And we have to fight against that. We need to call it out. But we can do it constructively. If there's mistakes, in the things I've done. Yeah, I remember YouTube comments for a show I did with Woody on World War II TV when I said 1940 instead of 1944, and I was taken to task for getting my years wrong. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the things where we are getting into important matters when we are maybe targeting the people who are making it or the people that have contributed to something we can be constructive in that criticism. We can be measured and mannered in how we do it. And to hold my hands up in the conversation in regards to the Sunderland the other day, I was probably more spiky than I needed to be because it's hard not to be when someone's taking aim at you. So we have opportunities here. And with the changes that are coming up in the master plan at Duxford. There's going to be lots of changes there. Land warfare is going. There will be changes with where the aircraft are going to be housed, which brings us to things like housing aircraft outside. And that's always a blue touch paper for aviation fans. And there's a number of aircraft at Cosford, which are outside at the moment, which ideally should be in. And that's because they need exhibition space. They need event space to keep the lights on. You know, go back and see. We'll put the link up for our conversation with Maggie Appleton, the CEO of the RAF Museum, and discussing the issues that they have to keep Hendon and Cosford going. So RAF Museum London, 
RAF Museum Midlands, of course. I spend long times chatting with Scott when I'm out in Phoenix about the museum game. I've sp spoken to the contacts I have at, at Duxford as well. In this climate, it is not easy for these institutions to just keep things going and keep the aircraft and objects that they have in good conditions. Now, there are issues. I have issues with a lot of the things the Imperial War Museum do. We won't get into copyright of images and films and things like that. But when it comes to the large objects, there are always going to be compromises that are made. And I have kicked off as I did on Twitter when I heard about the Sunderland going outside, which I then updated. I left the post up because, you know, I wanted the correction to be there. But this is, this is a hard game and we do need to put pressure on these institutions to maybe change some of the priorities that are there. But at the same time, Scott gets all kinds of flag. And so does Andy for some of the aircraft that they have outside in a desert in pretty good condition. Yes, we've done the little video on the B-36. They admit it needs a bit of love, but it's a big project if you've ever seen a B-36. And equally to that, there's going to be aircraft that are in restoration out there at the moment that will be put on display outside. I believe the self fighter is going to be on display outside. The Blackbird will be in the sun, so be sure not to touch it. What am I trying to say? Well, initially, there are going to be decisions made that we don't agree with, and I think we need to hold our institutions to account. But when we are disagreeing amongst ourselves, there has to be a better way to go about this than the way we have been over recent times. And I'm just wanting to put this out here. This is not the first time someone has done a post about us trying to be civil, but let's try to be civil. Let's try to understand and work together. And I am disappointed that a magazine that I subscribe to, one of the people at it came after me for me expressing an opinion that was based upon good information. That could have been a better conversation had one-to-one -one and not publicly. But there we go. I'm not going to cancel my subscription because I want the magazine to continue. And I want journalists, especially in our sphere, to, to keep going as well. We are always going to disagree with a lot of things. And being devil's advocacy about a lot of things as I am, I'm probably going to rub people up the wrong way. And if I do respond spikily at times, I do apologize. And I have this video out there to say, I'm going to try to do better. But what can we try to do is we look forward and let's try to enjoy the passions that we have. Yeah. You know, I've, lost count of the number of Facebook aviation groups that I've left because they've just deteriorated into ridiculous arguments about things that really don't need to be there. And I get picked up on a number of things and get called out on a few things. Our Typhoon Stripe video that we have on here, the great Chris Thomas called me out on a few things on that, which I've put corrections into the video for. And the main one he called me on was I softballed the friendly fire incidents involving typhoons and tempests. And I will have to rectify that because he was right. I did. So sometimes criticism even pointed can be what we need for moving our conversations forward. What you do with that is entirely up to you. Do you make a snap decision and cancel your subscriptions because somebody has been a bit, off with you. I don't know. That's entirely up to you. But what I'm going to try to do with this channel is to, to continue to engage, to try to get different viewpoints across where possible. Because I think when it comes to our institutions, they are where 
our passion for whatever it is we love usually comes from going to a museum, seeing a movie, whatever, reading a book. These things matter to us because they're escapes from usually the drudgery of everyday life. You know, there's things that we need to consider though about how we do it. And I, for one, I'm going to say as we wrap up this little video that if I've been spiky online to you, I apologize. If I've been spiky to you in the comments to this channel, I apologize. That is not my intention at all. I'm just trying to share a passion, try to share the information that I've received, um, sometimes through official and unofficial channels, but that's the benefit of having friends and contacts in places where you're able to help and share. And I didn't mean that to sound as it did. That did sound a little bit snooty. I'll see if I can edit that. We'll, we'll see. Maybe leave that in. I hope you get what I'm saying because we have got lots of fun things coming up. So my flights to the States are booked. We'll be back out there in November and lots of fun stuff going to be happening. Going to be back out at Pima. We're going to see if we can do some collabs with some people that are out there as well. We'll be in Denver. So hopefully check out some of the museums they have around there next year. Again, more trips planned bucket list trip, hopefully out to the, National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. I need to touch the Valkyrie. <laughs> Again, that probably sounds bad. But you know, we've got lots of fun things coming up on the channel. And closer to home, some great guests coming up soon as well. So next week, we're going to have the great Ben Skipper, who's been on when we talked about the 100 years of civil aviation, when we discussed monks jumping off towers and getting decent hang time. We're going to be talking about Boeing's fortresses, the B-17, 29, and 52. And the fact that the B-52 is probably going to outlast us all. After that, we do have some fun things. We're going to talk to the Beechcraft Museum. We're going to try to get out and about here in the UK before I head out to the States. Because I've got some great museums around me that we should visit, including the Wings Museum, which is just up the road even though I think they're shutting for the winter, but they are restoring a B-25 there for display. So check out your locals. The big institutions are great, but there's lots of fabulous museums for all kinds of things that are worth visiting in your lookouts. Spread the word on them. Shout out to Stowe Murray's as well, who will be continuing to fight to stay open. Do check out. I'll put the link to the videos we've done with them up there as well. So... I hope this little rant, rant, oh, it's not really a rant, ramble is probably a better word. Wasn't too much of a departure for everybody. I do not expect there to be much traction and, and, and views on this one, but it was a weird situation over the last few days when the, the Sunderland, Duxford Sunderland business kicked off. And I just wanted to try and say that I, for one, am going to try to do better. I, for one, am going to try to do better. It sounds terrible, but you know what I mean. We can, we can all try to do our best and push our shared passions forward in a way that benefits everybody. So that's my pledge. Channel's going to keep going. The pod will keep going. And please let us know if there's any subjects you want us to cover. As always, thank you to our fantastic Dam Casteers on Patreon who subscribe and keep things going. I have new toys that I'm working on setting up to hopefully make production of all these videos a little bit smoother as well. And as always, the incredible Pima Air and Space Museum for the fantastic support they've given us over the last year, 18 months now. Yeah. So looking forward to getting back out and seeing Scott and Andy and the team. We'll probably do a list to see if you want me to do some videos of the aircraft out there. We can maybe do some something with that. I think we will have to do the F-101 voodoo because leaving that out of our Century Series video, <laughs> lots of comments about that. So we'll see what we can do. But thank you so much for listening to me ramble. We're back with airplanes next week. Boeing's Fortresses with Ben Skipper. Be sure to like and subscribe and pop some stars into your podcast app of choice as well if you're listening to the audio of this. I'm going to try not to be so snarky in comments and things. And 
continue to share the love that aviation history has for us all. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. Do check in with all your friends as well. Make sure everybody's okay. And until next time, bye-bye. I just want to say many thanks to our fabulous Dan Castiers on Patreon. If you head over to our Patreon page, you can join the crew and get your name in the credits from just £3 a month plus a bit of ad. The Damcasters is hosted and produced by Matt Bone and is a Boney Abroad podcast production.